Men det vi får have to worry about this. They can be silly, fat, funny, intellectual, um, hardcore, you know, sensual, all those different things, philosophical. But with women, they always have to be feminine, feminine, feminine. And um, what I like most is not everybody say this is the age of women or whatever. I think this is bullshit, you know. I, I, uh, I just like to see women who can be characters and can be themselves. And num number one, two, and three, they are what they are. And number ten, they are, they are happen to, yes, they happen to be women in the same way as you happen to be Spanish and I happen to be Icelandic, you know. No, too blonde. And what is your name? Alex. Um, thanks for no, letting me be... No, I don't like your voice. You can leave. Name? Audrey. You seem attractive enough. Know your lines? Yes, of course. You'll do. Come back tomorrow. She takes images, blows them up, crops and alters them to make us see them anew. She chooses charged images from television and other forms of media and adds words that jar, disrupt, or heighten feelings. She makes passions run high. And like any good artist, makes us see the world in a new and perhaps more enlightened way. I remember my first time. It was awkward, and not in a cute teenage romance way. More like a Oh God, am I really going to sleep with someone who doesn't remember my last name and who only likes me for my ability to fake a laugh at one of their shit jokes kind of way? I mean, it wasn't his fault that I didn't like him. Although he probably wouldn't have cared. That's not what it's about. Can you please take that sour look off your face? Ultimately, it was a good introduction to the rest of my sex life. Put up, shut up, and don't ruin the illusion. Your play draw a sordid theme. Where did you gather your information? Ah, uh, I just uh, applied my imagination to my observation. That's a safe answer. Observation where? In your native language? Yeah, you are. Well, I, I had to be there. I've never been anywhere else. What fabrications they are. Mothers. Scarecrows. Wax dolls to stick pins into. We deny them an existence of their own. We make them up to suit ourselves. Our own wishes. Our own desires. Our own deficiencies. You ready? The idea of motherhood has been a looming presence threatening my horizon since puberty. There is no perfect mother. Every person is a child, damaged in some way, who then tries desperately not to damage the one who comes after. You may not want to hurt your child, but you will. There'll be things you said, things you didn't say that you should have, things you didn't do, interests that you unconsciously neglected. Motherhood is joyous. It is inevitable. It is the basis of our existence. But 
that does not mean that the responsibility of inherent failure does not terrify me. Okay, can we um, can we try again? Because you seem less cold. My first job out of university was in an office. It wasn't what I'd planned to do, but it paid the bills and I was good at it. I could have easily coasted my way through that job, but I continually hit targets and kissed ass to superiors and customers alike. You'd think being good at your job would win you some favor with your peers, maybe earn some respect. It was only a few months in that I first caught on to the gossip. One week, I was a know-it-all 20-something who didn't know her place. The next, a conniving coquette who would bat her eyelashes at the superiors to get her way. Oh, straight up, Audrey, you look feeble. I'm getting depressed just looking at you. The figurehead of the office's anti-Audrey movement was a 43-year-old man named Craig. Craig was your typical sexually frustrated, existentially stunted, middle-class white man whose greatest fears in life revolved around the so-called liberal agenda. One day, he thought it was absolutely necessary to corner me in the tea room and tell me that I was a tart in a too tight pencil skirt who didn't know her place. I would have loved to have seen his reaction when he heard about the promotion. My first job as manager was to arrange for his immediate dismissal. I informed him of the decision in my new office and watched as he walked back to his desk like a man walking to the gallows. An example to any remaining dissidents. I quit that job not long after. Um, I have uh, a, a, a very strong love for oppressed people, for my people. I want to see them free, and I, re and I, want, to see all, I want to see all oppressed people throughout the world free. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, and I realize that the only way that we can do this is by um, moving towards a revolutionary society where uh, the needs and, and the interests and the wishes of all people can be respected. I don't fear death. I fear ageing. If my value is largely determined by my looks, what do I do when time takes that away from me? I become the sexless crone, taking up the space that could be occupied by someone much younger, someone much fitter. What can I offer a world that sees youth as something to be exploited and equates that with beauty. If beauty is my currency, then without it, I'm penniless. My emotions will not be my own, they'll be that of a decaying mind. It seems you do not die when your heart gives out. You die when society deems you a burden. I am faced with my own mortality, with every new line that creases my forehead, each line a reminder of a future that disregards me. The best I can hope for is to become a novelty. 
A vector of wisdom to be used at another's whim. Not to use, but to be used. All right, cut. Okay, um, we'll go for another take, Audrey. Um, you just need to be more nurturing. All I'm getting right now is stern looks and isn't doing that pretty face of yours any favours. 